Hello compadres and compadres. I'll try to make this intro as short as possible. Today we're gonna to be talking about taking the black paint off of a Bixby Vibrato. More specifically, the B7, B70, and B700 series Vibratos. Now I've already taken the paint off of this Bixby that I have on this guitar. It's the same one you saw in the intro that I was playing. It is a B70. I'll give you the basic rundown of the three types of Bixby's that I'm talking about. The B7 is like the original. It is aluminum, and the way it was manufactured originally and still is today is that it's cast, or sand cast, as far as I understand it. Also also the B7 has the patent information down here under the word Bigsby. The B70, which is the one I have here, is also aluminum, but it is die cast in its manufacturing process. It of course comes manufactured with black paint in this area, but it does not have the patent information under the word Bigsby. The B700 is also die cast and is aluminum, and the only difference that I know about is that it has a distinct sort of V shape in this area right here. So the big question I guess is why would you do something like this? It really just comes down to aesthetics. I've always liked the look of Neil Young's old black guitar and also some of the Gretsch guitars that have their own unique vibratos that I believe are either licensed or manufactured by Bigsby. The ones I'm talking about you're probably familiar with or you've seen them before. They kind of have this look. They don't really have any black paint on them. They do have a hole somewhere in here and they have the word Gretsch in there also but they just have this sort of same aesthetic without the black paint and more of an overall metal motif if you will. So that's really all I'm going to say at this point. I go into further detail about the process that I use in the remainder of the video. The only other thing I want to mention is that the guitar I did this on, the one we've been talking about here, it is actually not a Gibson guitar. And if you're wondering why it has this headstock and why it's not as shiny as Epiphones normally are, and some other things that I did to make it look more like a Gibson. I have lots of videos about this guitar, and if you want to see those, click up here on the eye in the corner of the screen. So with that, let's get to the rest of this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. All those things that other YouTube channels tell you to do, it really does help. I appreciate you watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Okay, here's the Bigsby in its current state. It's pretty much stock other than the roughing up that I did of the aluminum parts to make it sort of relict. But as far as the black stuff on here, I did take a magic eraser, you know, those Mr. Clean things, and I was just kind of testing some things out that I knew wouldn't be really destructive. Uh, but I went at it with the magic eraser and it took some of the shine off, which, you know, no big deal. I didn't really care about that, but it was a little bit more shiny than this before this point. So that's just a preface. Uh, this is my fake Gibson guitar, it's actually an Epiphone, and I have a video about all the stuff that I did to that and sort of taking the shine off of it and making the binding stand out more. I replaced the plastics, the uh, pickups, the pots, the knobs, even this little knob. But I have videos on all that stuff. The point of this one, of course, is to talk about taking this black paint off the Bigsby. Now, I thought about just trying it while it was installed on the guitar and protecting the finish all around it, but really, it's probably easier to take it off. And just a reminder, this is a B70 Bigsby. It it is not the uh, sand cast B7 and it is not the even cheaper B700. It's sort of the middle of the road B70. Uh, most notably, it doesn't have the patent pending stuff or patent number down here underneath the Bigsby wording and uh, the B700 has that sort of V shape here. Uh, which just makes it look totally different. So we're going to go at this, take it off the guitar and see what happens. Okay, I have the Bigsby removed from the guitar. What I'm gonna use is this that I got from Home Depot. It's called Max Strip Paint Varnish Stripper. Now, I think I've heard, I read somewhere that this may be an enamel coating, which chemically, I don't know that this is gonna work. I'm just gonna try it. Now at this point, you've already watched the intro to the video and you know how this turns out, but at this moment, I'm testing this out for the first time and I have no idea how it's gonna go. I'm hoping it works. Essentially this stuff, you just put it on and if you apply a second coat, you wait 10 minutes, but you put it on, sorry for the noises, I'm out in my garage, but uh, that's a good point too, because this stuff is probably not great to uh, inhale the fumes. So I'm in a ventilated space, but essentially you put it on and I've got some plastic to cover it up with. It says to do that so it doesn't dry out. Um, you want to leave it on there for, it actually says to leave it on there for 30 minutes up to an hour. So uh, what I'm going to do first, I believe, is just test an inconspicuous spot on the back of the Bigsby. This is something that you would of course never see when this is installed on the guitar. So I'm gonna put a little bit somewhere on the back of this thing just to see, to make sure that it doesn't react with the metal and cause it to discolor or for some reason eat it away. I don't think that's gonna be the case. I have no reason to believe it would be, but just to be certain, because of course it's definitely gonna get on this Bigsby wording 
and probably sun a little bit on the edges. I'm gonna try not to, you know, be messy with it, but inevitably that's gonna be the case. Uh, just a note, you can see this is the actual, the original chrome plating that's really shiny. And if I turn it, you can probably tell. I went a little bit overboard here and got some sort of copper coming through, which you can't really, it looks uh, pretty dark here actually, but it's not too bad uh, normally. But that's the uh, original chrome coating you can see there. Just a side note. So uh, I've got some gloves and I'm gonna try to apply it with some Q-tips and just see how it goes. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna test out a little area on here just to make sure that it doesn't react with the metal and do any kind of weird damage to it. And if I didn't mention before, this stuff is a gel. Uh, so you can see it's pretty thick there. Or maybe you can see it, I don't know. But it is kind of thick as you would expect a gel to be. So I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit and see if it does any damage to the metal. Okay, I tested out the metal, it's been a few minutes and it did not have any kind of reaction. So I'm gonna apply it to the paint now on the Bigsby and see what happens. Of course, I'm gonna have to let it sit for, I don't know, at least 10 minutes, if not, like I said earlier, up to 30 minutes or maybe even an hour. I'll try to apply it liberally, but not make a mess. <laughs> It looks like the hardest part might be trying to get this stuff not to pool up in little puddles and having an even coat applied. So I'll either have to really get a big glob on there or I don't know, do a couple applications, but it just seems to be sort of uh, forming little puddles or pools on the paint. So I'll cover it up and come back in maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes and check, see if anything's happened and then we'll go from there. Well, it doesn't look like anything's happening, but this is the first coat. It said wait 10 minutes and then apply a second coat for stubborn paint. So I'll do that and then cover back up and wait probably 30 minutes and see what happens after that. Although I don't really know that I'm getting a second coat in this case, it just looks like I'm putting more on here and it's not really coating. It's just, yeah. I don't know. It's not really sticking to or adhering to the paint. And so I got a feeling that it's not doing anything, but we'll cover it up and give it a chance. Maybe something will happen. Okay, so I have to admit that I cheated a little bit and uh, I scraped a little bit of this off before I started filming. Uh, if you hear drums, that's because my kid's playing drums, so. So sorry about that, hopefully it's not too distracting. But yeah, I took a pick. This is an old kind of crappy pick I got laying around and I started scraping and lo and behold, paint is coming off very easily actually. So I'll just kind of show you this as I do it. Wow, I'm really happy about this. Um, I didn't think this was working at all at first, as I said earlier, but coming off really easily now and I think it's gonna look pretty good so I said earlier that uh, this stuff needed to be in a well ventilated place but it actually doesn't say that anywhere on the uh, container that I can see so it says it doesn't release any VOCs which I don't know what those are, but they're supposed to be bad for the environment or something, or maybe you're breathing, but it says it doesn't release any of those. So maybe uh, the fumes aren't an issue and it doesn't really smell bad. It also says to use gloves with prolonged use, but I don't plan on doing this for a long time. So I'm just gonna, if I get some on my hands, I'll just wash it off and I'll go at this with the, this pick, but I may have to get something a little bit better or I guess sharper, so to speak, with a better point on it for some of these areas, like the uh, edges and stuff. But for now, while it's coming off, I'll just keep going with this. So it's coming off pretty well with some elbow grease, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put another layer of uh, the stripper on there just to make it a little bit easier. And I also have a wire brush that I may employ to see if that helps. But for the most part, 
it's coming off fairly easily. So let's do another coat and wait a few more minutes and hopefully that'll uh, make it come off a little bit even more easily. Okay, it's been uh, maybe 10 minutes or so more. Let's see if this comes off any easier. Yeah, it looks like it's coming off easier, at least on this upper part. Of course, this will probably come off easier with some better tools. I don't really have a plastic scraper. I do have a metal one or a couple of metal ones for like drywall. Uh, I'm hesitant to use it to scratch it up, but I actually don't think it would make much of a difference on these edges, but not sure. I feel like I'm gonna scratch it up. Maybe we'll try this one. So I'm gonna put a little bit more on here and then I have a wire brush from, it's a nylon wire brush from trusty old Harbor Freight that I'll try to get some of this material off in the pores of the aluminum. So that might be hard to get, we'll see. But I think with enough time and energy, it'll come off and it's not really hard. I mean, it's coming off fairly easily the more I work at it. And uh, I really probably should just let the uh, paint stripper do the most of the work because it's coming off, like I said, pretty easily with this stuff. Just need to be patient with it and let it do its job. Okay, so here we are, current progress. I'm gonna put some more of the paint stripper on there and just let it sit and do its job so that it will save me some elbow grease and we'll keep going. Okay, it's been yet another couple of minutes and we're gonna keep going, see if this comes off. <laughs> Closer, ever so close. Yeah, the edges are just kind of valleys, I guess, and the paints are really built up in there, but I think I'm gonna be able to get it off with this scraper. I'm going at it pretty aggressively, and it doesn't seem to be scratching up the aluminum, at least visibly, you know, on the surface. So I'm just gonna keep going at this, uh, applying some, letting it sit for a few minutes, scraping, and you know, I think it's pretty obvious that this method is gonna work. It's just a matter of being uh, a little bit tedious and having enough patience to go at it. So unless I I um, come up with some other great solution or change the methodology. I'll just uh, hold off on uh, showing you this again until it's totally gone. I'm guessing I'm gonna have to get a little creative on getting it out of these areas between the letters. I may be able to use this or maybe even like a nail or a screw because I don't really think you'll see any scratches down in those little spaces between the letters. So I'm not too worried about that. I think for now there's really not a whole lot else to show. So we will revisit this whenever I get all or most of it off. Okay, it's been more minutes and I found an old credit card cut into a point. I'm gonna see if this helps get some of the edges and the harder spots that have been giving me trouble. All right, looks like those edges are coming off pretty good. Sorry, I know my hand is in the way for a lot of this, but not a whole lot I can do. Probably should have put the camera on the other side since I'm right-handed. Oh well, hindsight. I think I'm almost to the end here. Uh, what I did is kind of just kind of poured the uh, paint 
stripper on here. I made it so it's kind of like a lake on there and uh, these were the walls containing the lake and I'll let that sit for a few minutes. And now it's such that the gel is almost like a paste on my toothbrush, you know, so to speak. And it's kind of foaming up a little bit and it's able to be worked into the, the little crevices and such. And the aluminum inside of this section is sort of a pitted or porous, I guess. It obviously doesn't have holes in it, but it's, uh, I guess I would say it's just pitted. It's not smooth. So the wire brush, and again, it's a nylon wire. It's not really a metal brush or anything helps to get in some of those places and get that stuff off but like i said i'm really close to the end and i think it's going to turn out really good i'm going to be happy with it so again i'll show it to you when it's done okay so i think i'm done with this thing there is a little bit of black left in between the lettering of the word licensed in there which i can't really get to i think if i had like a push pin or straight pin like a sewing needle or something like that i could get it out but i literally don't have anything in my house like that at the moment so but i think it's been loosened up enough with the paint thinner that if i come across one of those i'll just use it on the guitar to kind of scrape in between the little bitty letters and it should come off but you know, from a distance, you can't really tell at all, I don't think. So I think it looks great. So please keep in mind that this Bigsby has been relicked. In other words, I roughed it up. So if you had a brand new Bigsby like this and you did the paint stripper, it would probably still look like this uh, in the middle. It would not be as shiny as the rest of the Bigsby. So I think it kind of gives it an overall vintage look which, you know, the older ones, a lot of those, I don't know if the paint uh, didn't stick as good or it came off with, over the years or if they didn't put the paint on at all. But, you know, I really like the look of this. But if you had a brand new one, you know, when you take the paint off, it's going to look like this in the middle, but the outside is going to look, you know, really shiny and chrome covered, brand spanking new. So just keep that in mind. I guess if I had to share any tips or lessons learned, I would say leave the paint stripper on as long as you can and let it do the work. I kind of Got anxious and started to scrape away a little bit early and as I did that I realized that you know I had to do more of the stripper so I put that on and then it was just kind of a back and forth thing whereas I think if I would have just left it for a couple of hours then I could have just come back and easily wiped most of it away so that's my tip and this is how I did it so I hope that this helps you and that you can use it if you want to give it a try